quick list if we have any time uh, because I actually have to leave at three but hopefully I'll be able to come back later after that for another stream but anyway um we have to leave at three so we're gonna play this deck and try to squeeze in a, re a wizard's red deck and then later today we'll probably try to play some control decks uh, assuming we have time I don't want to guarantee the later today part because um, well quite frankly I don't like to guarantee anything um, so anyway the main deck of this list which you can't see all of the one drops because of things looks pretty good like I don't there's not a single card in this main deck that I want to change just by looking at it the one thing I would say is I actually don't know what we want the invisible stalkers for but hopefully just by playing we'll come across a match that makes me realize how good they are that's the, like the only comment i would even have about the deck again as everybody knows i don't really play modern so expect me to make many errors uh i'll be learning this format as we play it uh we have this infect creature so this is probably a good enough hand to keep but i don't know about that I mean, it's potentially a turn three kill, I believe. Depending on how interactive their hand is. Oh gosh, well, that one feels pretty good. Start with this. Good chance they're going to opt or something. These blue white decks and blue uh, uh, Jeskai decks and stuff have been playing a lot of ops lately. Really, a dismember. Now that's not something I expected. Dismember into Muta Vault. Hmm. I guess we just lose then. Unless we hit something. This is a merfolk list with like the worst draw I've ever saw. But it seems good enough to beat us. It's actually probably not going to be good enough, but that's beside the point. At some point we'll draw a second infect creature and it'll most likely be enough, especially if it's the an unblockable one or like another nexus. If it's a glistening elf, it may not be enough, but we'll find out. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to kill both of those. Just take a big sweet 8 damage because it's fun. One is the loneliest number. Four, eight, twelve, thirteen. Oh. <laughs> I was considering it. This seems like it's better to kill these. I don't. Could just be wrong. Takes two attacks for like to like equal out. Hey Albert, thanks for stopping by, bub. Hope you're doing well. There's a good chance that if he doesn't have another dismember, he's just dead. Well, well never mind. He's playing the white version, which I didn't actually realize was a deck. But if he's playing the white version, that means he can also have Path to Exile. It's kind of weird that he could have Path and Dismember in the main deck. That's odd to me, but I don't really play Modern, so just because it's odd to me doesn't mean it's unreasonable. So he's got another one of those? During my main phase, so. Right, well, I guess we're just definitely going to lose then if he has anything. Unless we draw another Infector, like, you know, quick. Well, the Rancor is nice, so that means Glistening Elf may be legal or lethal. I 
This has to be a bad match for us, because Trickster's really, really good versus us as well. We're on a three-turn clock, so basically we have to draw it exactly this turn to even have a chance. And that's not it, so we're dead. Hmm. Don't think I'm interested in those or those. I really just don't think I want any of these cards. I don't think spells and spots are really good enough. I don't think I want spell pierces. The mutagenic growths aren't very good here, though, I don't think. So. Maybe bringing these in and bringing. Um, maybe I'm supposed to bring the Nature's Claims or something in to try and be able to beat Effervals. Problem is, I'd kind of rather have a Corruptor, and I don't know if Corruptors are good enough. Yeah, let's try it. Uh, I think this sounds good enough, even though it's obviously not particularly good. Maybe I'm just being blinded by multiple Infectors? Because they do have spreading seas, and like one spreading seas kind of crushes us. I guess I was supposed to get basic forest then, but that doesn't really change anything. Basic forest to save the two points of damage, rather. I did a pre release, and I did not come close to doing well in it. I went 1 and 3 with a deck that I actually thought was very good. I thought about putting it online and letting people look at it to tell me whether I'm just insane or whether the deck's actually not good. But I didn't have time. Is Harbringer of Ties a commonly played Merfolk card? Because if so, that's kind of news to me. Land? That's not a land. Um, I guess I'll play this one. Vivian, very nice. Why wasn't you able to go to the other? What happened? Vivian's pretty sweet. One of the people that crushed me beat the... Just beat the... Beat the poop out of me with a Vivian. Murph smashing with the 3-3 three, three Angel. Yeah, that card's not very good. My buddy, uh, done that, what, Swapperoo or whatever, Switcheroo, and stole somebody's 3-3 three, three Angel and won the game with it. He was pretty happy. Oh, you were asleep. Fair. Nice. Oh, and a Johnny in the first one as well. Tidebinder Mages and Harbringers, so he's just ready for the green decks. I didn't think the green decks were particularly popular, so like that's kind of odd in my eyes that like he's got so many green hate cards, but maybe the green cards are more popular than I thought. But like I said, I obviously don't know the format, so. Yeah. Well, since we only have one land, 
I don't see this going particularly well for us. We're probably going to have to try to dismember this even. Three planeswalkers from his pool? Wow. That's the money. The most expensive card I got out of my pool was one of those, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, one green X Hydras that, like, aren't very good. <laughs> You're famous. Also, Al, you never did send me that list, but that's okay. Feel like at this point, he's probably just going to have a counterspell of some kind. Yeah, that link doesn't work for me either, Smurf. Yep, 365. A full year in a row. Not missed a single day. Yeah, so he did have the spell Paris, and that's just going to be game. There's nothing that we're going to be able to draw to win from here, I don't think. And we're probably not going to be able to block and survive either, especially since he's got a Muta Vault. And he still has mana left open, so. He's casting something else? Yeah, whatever. That was a little sad. I definitely thought we had a good chance to win both of those games. Another link, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> they got to get banned in everyone's chat. They were definitely not wrong. I guess one infect creature is enough to keep. I maybe should have played the Catacomb here, but I didn't know if he was playing a deck that I was going to want to search for a breeding pool or not. I guess we'll get a breeding pool anyway. Since he just showed us forest and nothing else. A box and pulled five mythics. Oh, that's right! You guys get your box now on pre-release night. Used to not be able to. Used to have to wait a week to get them. So that means you got your nexus of threads as well then, right? So that's pretty sweet. Pretty sure this thing just gets bigger now. Ah, nah, nexus of fate. Sure, okay, sorry, yeah. So I think this match is supposed to be insanely good for us, but we missed another land drop, so probably won't be. You should do it, Albert. Stream that arena. Oh, Simeon Spirit Guide. A Simeon Spirit Guide in the anger of the gods. What is this nonsense? Alright, I guess we're just dead again. Like, we're not supposed to lose to these 
uninteractive decks. We get a third land. I think we just easily win this game. That's okay. Then they don't have a payoff unless it's, you know, escape shift I'm dead. Oh, they hit the primeval titan now. Nice. So we still win if we draw a land. Why is yeet a bannable word? I guess I don't know what yeet means, so yeet could be bannable. Um, I think that means we win. Uh, make sure we tap the right one. So that's newly controlled. This one's not newly controlled. Maybe these cards... I think all these cards do what I think they do. Main phase gives it 4-4. Four, four. Oh, who was the streamer? I thought you were talking about the Magic Channel. So he's playing Simeon Spirit Guides. Is Simeon Spirit Guide common in that deck? Z Magic. I like Z Magic. He's good people. He's probably who I'm going to host when I get done if Al's not online. No, if Al's online, I'm going to make fun of him because he should be watching uh, Korea versus China with me. Uh, don't think we want that. Don't think we want that. That's a maybe. That's a maybe. That's a maybe. Uh, creatures, don't care about that. So I feel like these cards are maybe... 3 a.m. Eastern my time, so 2 hours and 45 minutes, hence the very early stream. Actually, for the most part, don't think Mutagrowths are very good in this match, um, because all of their, all of their removal spells uh, is on intervals of 3. I do think I want these. I'm not sure which one of these I want, but I think I'm going to try the Spell Scouts. Spell Scouts could be wrong. have a man on the inside. I think we have to keep. It's a little on the weaker side, but I think overall it's worth it. Um, to cast a blighted agent or not to cast a blighted agent kind of don't want to cast it I don't think I'm going to cast it
Hopefully they don't have multiple removal spells. I think it's cool how uh, we get expeditions from mana traders. They look sweet. Like I really just like the art of this one. This trolling is the second best way to get streamers to know you. <laughs> That's amusing. I don't know that it's entirely wrong, but it's still amusing. Uh, I guess that resolves. You know, I can't do anything about it anyway. I troll Al all the time, but that's because Trowel or Al's my buddy. So you got a Primeval Titan, and he's tapping six mana for that. Well, we're just going to Spell Pierce that. If he had two Simeon Spirit Guides, I'd lose my mind. I would straight lose my mind. Um... I guess it's pretty easy to do this one. And then even more easy to do this one. Get them up. All right, one and one. We beat the... Uh... <laughs> we beat the, uh, the non-interactive deck. Hey, Sean, thank you for the 11-month resub, my friend. I appreciate it. Hey, Dong, what is up? Subbing is the first way, but that costs money. <laughs> um, all right, I'll keep this end. Yep, today made the full year. 365 in a row. Felt like a champion. Now I can never play Magic again after today. I can quit and retire and just sell cards in peace. And we know, we all know better than that. What would I do with my life if I wasn't playing the Magics? So he's playing humans, so at least we've got that going for us. I should have got the Expedition, but, you know. That makes me have to click a second button. Um, let's lead with this one, I guess. Hey, Dong. Thank you so much for the five biddies. Oh, God, no. I clicked a button. I don't know what's going on on my other screen. I did it again. How many times can I mess it up? Ah, oh, there we go. All right. Sorry about that. Um, all right. All my tools are back now. I can see things again. That's fair. The cardboard does call me flame. By the way, I saw your message. I have not read it yet. I literally woke up, processed my orders for the night, and then immediately logged on stream. Card cardboard does call me, but paper or, you know, online magic doesn't necessarily call me. Huh. Opponent did some stuffs there. Um, so let's see. 
I don't think we're lethal, but I've not done all the math. Yeah, we're one off at minimum. Should be able to win next turn, though. Just hold up our uh, Verdant Catacombs to protect us from an Effervile. If he's got like a Cat Cell 3 Booter plus a Reflector Mage, we're going to lose. If he just has one or the other, we should win. Hey, Duretti, what's up? So hopefully he just has one or the other and not both. Could also have like um, one plus uh, a Phantasmal image. Oh, okay, cool. I was, I was definitely going to check it out. I generally check my messages in between my League of Legends matches. Uh, well, I'm not dead, so I guess I don't care about any of this, right? Five, six, seven, yeah, I just, I just don't care about any of that. We're just going to untap and kill him, so it's fine. Well, I guess there's no reason not to kill this. We, we take one less damage killing it. And we put a card in our graveyard while we still hold up vines, so... Seems more than worth it. Still holding up vines, so. Yeah, I definitely want to try Diamond Mare. Diamond Mare is a card that I've definitely wanted to give a try to. Alright, so they're playing humans. Um, we don't have any more removal. So, we can worry about Effervile. Cards like this might be usable. Um, we don't have anything that really interacts with the other stuff. Spell Scout to like, try to be the Reflecting Mage, but I don't know if that's good enough. I want to try like a Diamond Mare deck that's got like just, you know, Crested Sun Mares in it because Bay. Are they any are they any good paper card? I do not know if it's still in business, Murph. But Cape Fear Games is the paper side of MTGO Traders. And you used to be able to like trade ticks for cards or cards for ticks, you know, paper, paper to moto. I do not know if they still do it. I've not dealt with them since Hours of Devastation, but it's a really nice website. Um, again, can't comment on, you know, the past year or whatever, but I've got a really, uh, you know, I've had a really good, really good amount of work from them in the past. And, uh, I know some of the people who write from their website and stuff, and, like, they're pretty good friends, so I always try to, like, plug them the best I can. Really, really like them, but, again, I've not I've not really dealt with that side of magic in about a year, so it may not be there anymore. I don't know. I do not know. Um, I hope it's still there because, you know, it's something the community could really, really use, but... But, but it's worth checking out if it's not there, if it's not a thing anymore. I apologize. I really just do not know. Uh, I kind of want to take these mutic, mutagenic growths out, but... Surprise blocking might be relevant in this type of match. I'm still going to take them out and give it a try. Maybe I'm too afraid of Effervile. There's plenty of websites, though, that'll buy your ticks at, like, 0.94 per, and then you can go buy whatever magic card you want, you know, from whatever website you want. So, you know, like Mana Traders, for example. Mana Traders is, owns the website MTGO Tickets, and they're always buying tickets for cash. Um, let me see what their current buy price is. Uh, I'm obviously a big fan of MTGO traders, so I'm a big fan of MTG tickets. They're currently buying tickets at 0.9, 0 0.94 per. So big shout out, but yeah, so like even if you if Cape Fear Games doesn't do the, the that stuff anymore, you can always do the like selling and buying stuff.
But you're going to have to set up an account to go to a website and, like, buy as well. You know, you're not going to be able to log on to capefear.games or capefeargames.com and not, not set up an account. By the way, I kept this hand, and I didn't quite realize that I don't have an Invector in my hand. I was just talking and not paying attention. <laughs> That's slightly embarrassing. I was just not paying attention at all. Wow. I don't think I actually need the blue mana. All right. Well, plan B, since I screwed up plan A, get get attacked, friend. <laughs> I'll attack you with my 4-3. We draw an untapped land. We can attack for, let's see, 4, 8, 12, 16 points of damage next turn, which is pretty sick because he's probably not going to block. So we draw an untapped land. There's a good chance we just win. We did not draw an untapped land. There's a good chance that we have no chance to win now. <laughs> There's a good chance we just lost, but that's okay. I guess we've not lost. This guy can chump block that guy, assuming he has nothing. Most of the, most, you should have pay, you're, you're an adult now, Smurf. You should have PayPal this day and age. Not to be, not to sound insulting or anything, but at this, at this point in life, you should have PayPal. Let me go ahead and sneak another little bit in there. Hopefully we're not just dead. We are just dead to a reflecting mage, though. Um, are we dead to that? We are dead to that as well. No, we're not dead to that because we can throw a ground swell or something on it. I think that puts us to where we can't win anymore. But I don't think we're dead. Why can't I target you? We. Because it's just... Electronic money is the wave of the future, pal. So we can still win if we draw exactly uh, Become Immense. And we're dead. We have now. Uh, so we did have an out, which is nice. I think I'm just going to run it back. I wonder if I should just cast Invisible Stalker. It seemed a lot easier to just try to win that way. Is, like, Stalker just better than Glistening Elf? Seems like these Glistening Elves just aren't ever going to block here. But this seems, like, really weird, too. I don't know. We'll try it. I said block, but I'm in attack. Derp. Alright. This hand's great. Everything we've ever wanted out of life. Just literally everything we've ever wanted out of life. Let's serve our life total and just grab an old forest. Old boring forest. PayPal's great, man. You can get your porn with PayPal and nobody will know it's you. I think people underestimate the value of that. Alright, so if they have nothing, we just win next turn, which is nice. Oh my god, they had a gut shot. <laughs> I didn't expect to get gut shotted. Gut shotted into a cat self rebooter. Wow. Wow. 
into a card that I can't really a actively use. You gotta pay to get the good stuff, man. Oh, you have to target something that's not a May? Oh my god, that's not a May. Wow, I just, I literally I think it just pulled hair out of my head. That's not a May. I should have read my card. Read the effing card, Ray. It's not a May, it's not an opponent. I have to kill my own dude. Wow. Wee! I'm so bad, everybody. I'm so very bad. I'm so very bad, so very bad. So very bad. If I draw a fetch land, I force him into chump blocking every turn until he can start getting reflector mages online, though, so it, like, may not matter. JK. Wait. Um. That was kind of weird. This Invisible Stalker just looks real bad now, doesn't it? If I'd hit an untapped land there, I guess he wasn't going to die. He could have had another Grape Shot, or, sorry, Gut Shot. I don't know why I said Grape Shot. I said Grape Shot a while, too. I do, too. Uh, MTGO Traders, I can't get the, the new cards to the 11th, so we're not going to have a lot to do until the 11th, but that's okay. If I attack with this, he has to block, but he just blocks with that. If I attack with this, he can just take it. And next turn, he's forced to block. It's kind of brave if he takes it, because like now Rancors are so brutal. They don't ever draw a land, though. Like, we're in pretty good shape. I think this is just three attacks based on what they have on the board. I think it's still faster, and... But I could be wrong. Yeah, I, th I think there's some matches that you just do that versus... Wow, so they get another thing? Rip, maybe it was better if I just attacked with this every turn. Because, like, now they can triple block it. JK can't triple block it. They can get absolutely wrecked if they try to triple block it. I hear this dismember that I drew was good. Want this one back. So we'll pay with... No, I don't want that one back. I'm going to kill all of these things, so... I guess I would rather have this one back. I would rather have this one back. I was right. Now, I want to kill both of those, so I'm just going to go ahead and pump this up, too. That way he doesn't have a blocker for next turn. So even with our massive play mistake, I think we're still going to just get there. 
Yeah, we just got there. Opponent didn't draw lands. This match feels extremely favorable for us, but like I said, I punted pretty badly with that Ink Moth Nexus play. Punted really, really badly. Yeah, I, th I think there's just some decks that are going to have, like, so much spot removal on things that it's, like, really hard to win with the Infect package. So, like, you either have to win with a Wild Defense or something like uh, Invisible Stalker or whatever. But I could be wrong. Don't really know. Seven glimmers today in one game. If you tell me you lost after that, Murph, I may ban you. If you tell me you lost, I may ban you. Because that's that's inexcusable if you lost. Just inexcusable if you lost. Uh, I think this hand's a keep. I think all hands are a keep. I was like, why mulligan when you can keep seven? Seven's like a lot more cards than six. If you told me you lost, mean you'd have words. I am not I'm not even kidding. I'd at least I probably wouldn't ban you, but I'd at least make fun of you. You'd at least get made fun of. Alright, I'll play this. It was the guy that knew you. Well, <laughs> you're like, and this is why people ban me. Get glimmered seven times. Seven is the longest number. Not. I don't know, some, sometimes I don't know what I say. I really regret it when I, after I say it. So he didn't have a one drop and he didn't have a two drop, which means he's going to have mono reflector mages and um, mono reflector mages and manus riders, or like mono manus riders and uh, phantasmal images. Because <laughs> I want a 14 energy. <laughs> yeah, I've been playing Esper in real life, and I'm not playing like PPTQs or anything. I'm playing like casual events, Friday Night Magic, stuff like that. And every time I cast a Glimmer, like they'll always reach for the dice to help me to get my energy out, and I'll be like, man, I don't even have Ever Hub in this deck. Let's just not worry about that. I don't want to write it down. <laughs> I don't want to use a dice. I just, I don't have any energy. Stop. <laughs> Just, just stop, please. This is a casual event. I'm, I'm not writing it down. I promise you, I cannot spend an energy. And if I do happen to like Scarab God or Whirler Virtuoso or something, then I'll just not make Fopters. Is that fair? <laughs> like, is that fair? Is this just another human's opponent that's like drone absolutely nothing versus us? These were resolve, I guess. I attack you for a bunch. I mean, I record it right at real events. I'm talking about very casual events, like like standard showdown or a Friday night magic or something. I, I would record it at a real event. 
I mean, I'm not, I'm not that much of a douche. So is this the reflector mage, or is this the mana shrouder? Or is it like one of them plus a image? Yeah, I mean, it's easy to forget when, like, there's not actually energy cards in your deck. It's, like, super easy to forget when you don't actually have an energy card. I think I probably should have just played another Ink Moth Nexus last turn. Really? You took that one? Figured you would have at least taken that one and it'd be a little bit bigger, more relevant body. <laughs> but it is what it is. It is what it is. Alright, so... We're going to start with this. I guess I kill this one. Said he clicked the wrong one. So I force him to chump block here, that way he can't phantasmal image or anything. I've seen some builds of blue-white control that still play Ether Hub for some reason. It always blew my mind. I never understood why. Like, it made zero sense to me. Uh, like, maybe they had a random black splash or whatever, but, like, I'd be playing Approach, right, and we're playing, like, 16-turn games, and we play all three games, and I've still never saw anything for black. So, like, maybe it was, like, a random something out of the sideboard. I don't know, but I have definitely saw hubs in those decks before. And it has always blown me mind. It always blew me mind. What? What? This is a new card. Oh, this gives them flying. This that card's sweet. Oh my god, I want to try that now. All right, so um, I guess I'm gonna play this. Make sure we click the newly controlled. Fire up this thing. Attack with both. If he has a mana shrouder or whatever, we will we'll probably save it if he does. I'm not sure. He can give a million, like anything that he has for free mana that he could give flying now. But the become immense gives us enough insurance that I don't think it matters. We, I don't think we have to worry. And he has to keep blocking the Ikramir as well. And we're going to recast this Blighted Agent, so. Oh, wow. He's going to give them double strike. Well. I just got wrecked. Hey, Blade Ogre. Wow. The first year subscriber, man. Thank you very much. Highly appreciate it. So the opponent's playing some spicy meatballs in his deck. And our life total's pretty low. We'll probably just Pendlehaven and kill whichever one that the Silver Blade's on. Uh, I, we don't even have to Pendlehaven like that then, do we? So my guy's going to be a 3 and they just trade. I'm fine with them just trading. 
And then I'll pump this guy up to save it. Could have saved my guy, but I'd rather put this unblockable thing down and have three lethal attackers for the following turn. I've been wanting to try Blimp Man Approach again. <laughs> That's actually kind of neat. I really, I really want to try that again. So now we have three lethal attackers, and we have an become immense to make sure we win whatever combat there is to win. I don't think that he can win with two mana versus that. He's got some cards we're actually going to have to pay attention to post-board, though. So what does Sobon do? Let's Google Sobon. Is it something I can break up a spell? Cat. Is a keyword mechanic that says pairs. It can choose another unpaired creature. Oh, it says you, so I can't make him, I can't, I can't disrupt it with our bro. I'm going to try the Stalkers again. So just like when we were playing the black green version of this deck, it appears that uh, these Glistening Elves have just appeared to be the worst card in the deck. I think they're still good enough to play though, because like A, the card's good, and B, it's good versus every non-interactive deck. Like, it's going to be good versus all of the Storms, all of the Ad Nauseums, all of the Tron, all of those top decks. So I think you still just have to play it, but, like, it's it's obviously going to be, like, very bad versus all of these creatures-based decks. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Harassing my friend. He's on uh, in his car on his way back from Panama. They went there for uh, spring break, or uh, they don't go to college. I don't know why I'd call it spring break. They went there for vacation. Got him a nice little, nice little break. So I think I'm gonna keep this hand too. It's like really hard for me to mulligan any hand that's got anything resembling cards like this. I think I'm going to preserve our life total a little bit and just get forest. Yeah, I'm definitely just going to get forest now that we've saw that. One is the longest number of attacking their face. I wonder what our opponent cut from their deck to make room for the two Sobon bros. I think they were both bros. There could have been a female there, I'm not sure. 
It's pretty big. That is a quick clock. I think we're lethal next turn, so one. Shouldn't press that button. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we can attack for eleven next turn. Don't know what they have in their hand yet, but we have the ability to attack for eleven. We now no longer have the ability to attack for eleven. I tried him in, he wasn't even good in my limit. I had two of them in my limited deck, which, well, well, sorry, there's probably more than one Hydra. What Hydra are you referring to? Because if you're referring to the Hydra that I played, I had two in my limited deck and I wasn't even a fan. So, so... They took the good one. How dare they? How dare they? Yeah, that's the one that I had two of. Was not a fan. Did they have more things? How do I ever beat this? Wow, so good. It's a really good, really good mulligan for them. They didn't draw any of their weird cards or anything. Not sure I can beat this anymore. Um, that actually probably does something. I think I definitely need to give it at least this. Hmm. So I have two blockers for the next turn. If I block this and I block this, I'm still alive, so. Fair enough. Scarab God, exactly. But all the Scarab God decks are going to have contempts and stuff. Uh, so we get our thing back. In theory, we can win next turn. It all is going to depend upon what they have. We have exactly two blockers, and we'll be at five life. So we can't beat like a Mantis Rider. Um, probably can't beat another, we can beat that. That's something we can beat. A treble enabler might be good. Might be very good. Yeah, the mammoth is, might be playable. So if they attack with a mile, we know we win. Oh, well, I take that back. They could have gut shot. We do not know we win. Gotta make sure we click the dried arbor here. Block these two. I guess we don't know we win, right? I don't know. Yeah, we, we, we just win, even if we don't hit the land. If we hit the land, that makes it easier, but... We won anyway because three, four, five, six, seven, but. The land makes it easier because we only have to cast one spell and not two. That dried arbor. The tricksy little blocker.
Nice. So we're just plowing through these decks. <laughs> Our opponent said laugh out loud GG. I guess he wasn't expecting to dry Darber friend. <laughs> nice. This deck feels like it can fight with humans. It's kind of cool. Um, so we have no creature. We have to mulligan this one. Uh, yeah, we have to mulligan. We've had a lot of opponents of mulligan tonight, too. Uh, we'll keep this. It's a little on the weaker side, but I don't think I can mulligan it. Also, for some reason, don't want that Glistening Elf. We're just going to have to hope they're not playing an interactive deck in the Icker Claws enough. Stomping ground could be a bad sign. One of the main reasons I got rid of the elf is because if we don't have, um, like if they're playing an interactive deck and they have a second land to kill the hierarch, we would just lose. Rip. That's okay. Wonder what they're playing that is teamer based. Oh wow, it's four color. Um, can't protect it. Guess we want our elf back. Have nothing else going for us. Four turn clock. Let's rock. <laughs> I mainly did that because, like, dealing damage to them obviously isn't going to be good for us, but we need to get cards in the graveyard for the Become Immense anyway. Which is the entire fault process there. But he's going to take it. Huh. <laughs> Alright, fine. Hey, Mason Clark. Thank you for the follow. I figured he would block there. I'm actually shocked that they didn't block there. Another tribe elder. Well, that's not... That's, that's no good. Let's have some fun. I dare him to take it again. 
<laughs> the full five colors. So this is probably bring the light scape shift. So we need to hit a land this turn or we're probably 100% dead. I mean, we don't have anything else, right? If they don't have it, I mean, theoretically, we win next turn. It's pretty hard for them not to have it in this spot, though. Because they've literally done nothing. If they sack that, we know they have it. Because they're not sacking that and not having it. I guess I'll make them show us the scape shift. Maybe they're just on a brew. But if they're not, we can scoop. Okay, scape shift. Willing to scoop. Pretty easy. Pretty easy concession. Um, What is good versus scape shift stuff? Maybe the spell pierces are okay. I don't think I want anything else. It's hard to find any Ilm 19 cards on Moto right now. Just, I guess it's a keep. Definitely has to be on the weaker side of keeps, but I think it's still a keep. I don't think I care about a blue mana. I think I want to try to stay at 18 life to make them need an entire another card or whatever. That's just too cute. Doing that point of damage to them doesn't feel like it matters. Tag means to to fairy. All right, I guess I don't care about that. I would like to hit an untapped land. Eh, not an untapped land, but an acceptable one nonetheless. Make sure the exalted happens, that way we don't get gut shot again. I hit you for about half. Let's see what they can do. They're going up to a lot of mana this turn, getting the search for tomorrow off. Hopefully they'll tap out and we know we just win. Though we do have a blossoming defense now, so we actually have insurance when we try to win next turn. Clearly not a hundred percent, but like we obviously feel pretty good. Bring the light for f what's that for four? What do they have for four? A cryptic command. I guess that'll do it. Well. They still don't have enough mana to kill us, though, so. Keeping that thing do anything? I don't think so. I think I'd rather just keep what we have. Yes.
What do you have, opponent? Attack for five. All right. That game was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. A lot closer. Um, so is there anything we actually want to change? He didn't show us any targeted removal, really, extra, that he didn't show us in game one, so I don't think I need to spell scat. He didn't really show us any artifacts. So I think we're just going to submit deck and row. Uh, this hand is really suboptimal. Like, the dismembers, only medium versus this match. It's not great. It is... I do not know the answer to that question, Flame Guts. I can figure it out for you, though. Um, aggressive Mammoth. Click on the gathering. See, the collector's number is 302. It is not in the packs. The number's 302 out of 280, so it is not in packs. You have to get it elsewhere. I did not know that. Wow. Hmm. That was a card I kind of wanted to spec on, too. I'm a little disappointed now. I think I can't keep this hand. I think if I had a blue mana, I would risk it. But without a blue mana, I don't think I can keep it. I actually do think I can keep this on the draw without the blue mana. If we were on the play, I'd probably mulligan this hand as well. I don't even know if the Planeswalker decks are released yet. I, can, I have no I have no answer to that flame. I'm sorry. Um. So I guess I just want to play this one and hope that we don't get too blown out by an anger. I think I'm actually going to attack with the Glistening Elf. If he wants to not get a land, I think I'm fine with that. Like, I feel like that's good for me, for him not getting a land. I think he has too many cards that, like, just bought my board anyway. And I think putting cards in my graveyard is not a negative thing here. Um, hmm. Let's put them at two. A lot of things can still be a problem, but like there's some chance that he doesn't have a removal spell, right? Just another bring to light for five this time. Be interesting to see what they get. They're at two, so whatever they get has to deal with the blighted agent. It's just anger to the gods. That can't be that bad for us if they're getting an anger to the gods. Still have a lethal threat here, and we have a moderate amount of protection. Like, we can stop another Bring to Light. Cannot stop an Anger to Gods, though. Cannot stop that. So now they're going up to six lands. 
Alright, well. We gotta find a thing. Now there are seven lands. There's a thing. Alright, well, if they've got a scape shift, we're dead. If they have a bring to light, we're dead. If they don't have either of those cards, it's not that bad. Okay. Alright. So that's GG. I guess we should have left the blue man up. Make them show us the scape shift, I guess. If we left a blue mana up, though, just to play around Snapcaster Mage, I don't, I don't think we can do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's eighteen. GG. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're like a stone favorite in this match, but um, this, this, this okay. I think we actually could have won both matches. We lost. Maybe if I'd got a different land earlier, right? Did I, what I, what I search for? Baronet Catacombs, activate it. I don't know what I got. Played, yeah. If I'd got a second blue source of this Baronet Catacombs, we win this game. I don't know if I'm supposed to or not. I don't think I'm supposed to. Maybe I'm supposed to just get it. Not sure. Hmm. Oh well. So what do we have? We have an hour and forty minutes. Let's play a standard league. That's not a standard league at all. Um, reset. Let's see if we can get a red deck wins league in. Even though we've not updated our deck any. So I'll pop that deck up and give me one second to change the title on everything. And then we'll be on our way. I have to change like three things real quick. And whatever. I'll start the match and I'll change it while we're doing the match. Update with that. That's the first thing we update. Now we gotta go to Stream Decker. Wish there was like a widget or something that just let me update everything at once. No, oh, sorry. I need to click my decks. My decks. And then we need to update the command in chat. That's this, so there we go. Got a pity chest though, so we can't ever be upset, right? Can't ever be upset when the pity chest comes a knocking. I did think we had that game though. I thought we had that game on two separate occasions. Plug the old phone in to charge. So we got a 4-1 the last time out with this deck, but it felt like we ran really, really hot. And I think the chat helped a lot in one game. Like, uh, Lars was watching us, and there was like four of us or three of us or something that wanted to make one play, and Lars wanted to make another play. And I don't want to say hindsight is twenty twenty, but like it, in, in that particular case, at minimum, Lars was 100% right. I'm not good enough to know overall which was right. I defer to somebody like Lars, like, like, basis. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, which is why I keep calling him Lars, by the way. Like, he's obviously an insanely better player to me, so I just default think he was probably right, and we were all probably wrong. But, you know, I'm not good enough to know 
whether I can say that to be a factually true statement or not. I just assume it's true. I do not know that it's true. But anyway, so we got about an hour and 30 minutes. Hopefully we'll be able to finish this Red Deck Wins League. We can probably go a little bit over that. Um, for anybody who's curious, I'm going to go watch Korea versus China Rift Rivals. That's what I'll be doing at three. But like they 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 do a little they do a little pregame and a little talking and stuff like that. So we might be able to get to like three fifteen or something. But I definitely don't want to miss a second of it. I am pretty obsessed with League of Legends coverage. In the future, we may be streaming a little League of Legends on this stream. So I don't know what we're going to do for the stream. I don't know if I'm going to just like, you know, keep streaming every single day. Or I don't know if I'm going to like try to schedule it more or whatever. But I'm definitely going to try to figure out something to like hopefully improve it for people. I'm thinking about just like doing another 365. I even looked up the record for consecutive streamers and it's like at 820 right now. But, like, I can never beat them unless for some reason they stop streaming, you know? So, like, even if I stream... Oh, this hand's a snap keep. Even if I stream the next thousand days, like, they, they still already have, like, a 450-point lead on us. Like, we can never catch them. Why, why do I want the Bane Fire? The fire with fire in my sideboard is 100% just for Lyra. Lyra comes down at 5 mana. We're playing 22 lands. How often are we going to have 6 lands versus Lyra? Somebody else suggests that, like, Button suggested that same thing, but I'm not playing fight with fire to deal damage. I'm playing fight with fire 100% to kill Lyra. And, like, the green-white decks and stuff like that, they, they play Lyra on turn 4. Even the blue-white decks can play Lyra on turn 5, so that means I would have to hit every single land, or I would have to get settled to kill those Lyras, and like I just don't think that's super likely to happen. It's 100% in my deck for just like the one thing. If it was in my deck for more than that, then like I could see that, but like I'm just not using it for that one thing. Oh, cool. So we're getting powered. Did I join a competitive or a... When I see a card like that, I immediately have to go look and see if I accidentally joined a friendly. Oh, wow, they're playing Dargons. That's sweet. If I was playing like a red-black deck and I had other answers to uh, Lyra, like Murder Boats and stuff, Banefire is the type of card I would want in my sideboard there. Like, I'm not saying Banefire is a good card. I played when Banefire was standard legal the first time, like, I'm definitely going to want to play some Bane Fires in certain decks. It's just this particular deck, I don't think I want Bane Fire. Since I'm using Fight with Fire for a very, very specific reason. And that Bane Fire doesn't cover that specific reason. Maybe we could play it over Chandra, or like maybe we could play it over a Rekindling Phoenix or something. Another, another Dragon Enabler. Alright. Uh-oh, here's coming the first dragon. What do we got? Oh, just that? That's a good dragon, though. I feel like I rudely said just that. I did not mean it that rudely. Just kind of kind of meant like, well, that doesn't change my plan at all. <laughs> That's kind of what I meant. My plan at all is still to get brutal. Now we even have a dragon we can sack if we want. They're theoretically four life. Though I do think I value three random cards under Beaumont more than like a lightning strike in three lands. But hopefully we don't have to make that decision. It's another dragon. 
All right, that one doesn't kill us yet. Somebody cast this on me at the pre-release after having a Vivian out. I, I, I cried. Was wasn't wasn't happy. I thought I thought they were just stone rude. Hmm. I guess I'll do my point of damage. Makes their things smaller too, which isn't terrible. I forgot this was a card. I always thought this card would end up being like a dollar or something because of like the casual appeal and like EDH and stuff. It just never, it never did move. It always stayed bulk. There was a time where I wanted to pick up like 20 foil copies for like 30 cents each and I just didn't. Always, the art looks shines, like this green and this red shines really nice in the foil builds as well. <sighs> Alright, we're going to have to read this one. Only to cast dragons, create a bunch of dragons, and a loot. Okay, cool. So, we don't have to care about that. Another, another Dargon. Yeah, we've been doing pretty well with this list. I'm liking this list a lot. We'll take our five here. I, I don't I don't even know what that card is, so it's hard for me to answer it. I'm not going to throw the Lightning Strike here, because he might have drawn like a Burn Spell or something for the Courier, and I just don't want to risk that. I can get an extra card if I wait to, or whatever, but... Hey, he did draw a Burn Spell for the Courier. How does it feel to be such a smart boy? We're so smart. Oh yeah, yeah. You, that that probably hasn't changed too much in value. We such smart boys and girls. So if I attack him with both, he has to chump block. So like he chump blocks this and he throws this away. Is that worth it? It's probably just not worth it. I feel like a lot of people would have messed that last turn up. Like a lot of people I see at my local events and stuff. Obviously not like great players or anything. But that sounds offensive too. You know what I mean. Like the LSVs of the world aren't going to do that. But like, I feel like it's something that you could commonly see. Uh, they drew all other Palladias. So all we have to do is draw a shock. We've we've got uh, two shocks, three Wizard Lightnings, and three Lightning Shocks left in the deck. I think we win if we hit any of those. And then there's some like backdoor possibilities that we could win. So he's going to exert there. He's going to kill that. So like if he doesn't have a shock, then like even a Crasher or an Earthshaker would win here. That is something that doesn't win here, though. You know, we're not dead if he doesn't have anything, so at least we get another turn. I really thought we just won this game. I thought we won this game very easily. We did not. We did not win this game very easily. Like, I didn't even think this game was close. Really regretting not getting their Varix off the board now.
We did draw a lot of lands. What do we have? 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 lands. 12 out of our 10 lands. Casting another dragon too? That didn't do anything, so. All right, we still have an out. Yay! Whoa! Oh! <laughs> Woo! Feels like Teen Spirit. I don't know what I'm saying. Can I just bring this in versus a bunch of dragons? Kind of want to bring these in too. All right, these probably ain't great. He showed us mostly red dragons, so we're gonna try to Chandra's defeats. He showed us Sarkin too, but for the most part, we're still gonna just try to be a fast deck. Um, is this a good enough hand to keep? I don't think I'm a good enough player to mulligan a hazard. It. One is the longest number. That we ever did see. That's why this guy comes with his little monkey friend. I said guy, but it's definitely a, a girl. Oh wow, they don't have a land? That's unfortunate. Making monkeys since... What's the date on this card? There's no date on the Moto version. All right, making monkeys since whenever that year was. <laughs> she <laughs> identifies as a Zer. All right, Z Zev maybe. Okay, I apologize. 2017. Sure. Man, it feels like these cards have been longer, legal longer than a year. It really feels like these cards have been legal a lot longer than a year. Alright. Deal. <laughs> Shit, I said she. <laughs> okay. Alright. Hey, it looks like we got something to kill. Ooh, this card's sweet. Saw somebody have it and some dragons under pre-release. I was a bit, um... A bit jealous. Boom. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't ever keep you can't ever keep a good smurf down. So opponent has six mana again. To see which friendo he's gonna play this time. What in the world's this one? Whenever it attacks, 
For each player, choose target permanent that player controls. Those players sacrifice those permanents. Each player who sacrifices a permanent this way reveals the top card of their library and puts it onto the battlefield if it's a permanent. So they can kill Hazard? What? They can kill Hazard! I think I'm going to sneak this point of damage in. Because if for some reason he gets cute, or they get cute and try to block that, or whatever, um, then we still have, you know, stuffs. Or like, we still have, we'll, we'll, we'll they would have taken 5 plus 2, 7, so. So it's pretty, it's pretty safe to assume that they were going to block this, I think. This game's still winnable. Imagine if they flip another hazard. How swell would that be? And they get this thing back? Nope. They want their mana for something else. Interesting. Guess they have an abrade or something then? Flip us another hazard, friend. Our opponent missed a land drop and we still could lose this game. And I thought our hand was pretty reasonable. This is a wizard's lightning. It is not. It was not the card we were looking for. And that's game, right? Because they didn't exert, so they can attack for 10 next turn. We can make it smaller, but there's nothing we can get that wins. But that's not true. If they have stone nothing, if they have literal no cards, then we can hit a hazard and still win if they swing out. Alright, so we'll play for what small percent we have. If they have a removal spell for this, then we are just dead. Hmm. Maybe they need to abrade their pillars. Is their deck the type of deck that using a braids on pillars is good enough versus? I'm going to pretend it is. By killing their pillars and sarkins might give us enough time to win with our... Uh, I don't think I can keep this hand. Uh, I don't think I can win with this hand, but I don't think I can mulligan it either. Certainly don't want that card. They put on bottom of their library as well, so we were even on that front. It's not a bad one, but I'd still rather just deal two damage here. Hopefully they don't have a sweeper this game. Right, hopefully we hit our abrade. I think if we hit that abrade, we're probably going to win this game. And if we don't, we're probably not. No, we're just going to hit another hazard. That's basically the worst card in our deck. Because now there's no chance to attack with a turn 4 hazard. We needed anything that costs less than 2 mana. 
So we needed to hit not hit one of the two hazards, not hit either of the two crashers, but like the crashers are better than the hazard, of course. We needed to not hit the one wizard's lightning. We needed to not hit the four chain whirlers. But that's okay. Because they don't have a particularly fast draw. They didn't have a second mana producer. So our hazard's probably going to be fast enough now. Unless they have like double black contempt. Wouldn't say no to a land right now. They did not have the second contempt. So that's good. And that's the icing on the cake. We can now attack with Hazret. And we have a backup Hazret. And we can just throw four damage at this point. So now they have to deal with the board, the Hazret. And uh, it's pretty hard with the amount of mana they have. I won't say impossible. I will say improbable. But their deck is pretty cool. It actually put up a lot of work versus us. I can, I can totally see there being a Sarkin deck. I mean, it, it came really close to beating us. So, so a typical mid-range deck then. I know that I didn't get to listen to it. Um, I'm two weeks behind on Jerry's podcast, which, by the way, is disgusting. I actually feel bad that I've not listened to this podcast. It feel, feels like if you want to play competitive magic, listening to his podcast is one of the most important things to do in a week. And don't get me don't get me wrong. Like, I could be totally wrong. It's just my feeling. Like, I just love listening to those guys. But I'm a couple weeks behind, but I was listening to a finance podcast and they mentioned that Jerry and Brian had said Sarkin is one of their favorite cards in Elm 19. I don't know if they were talking about flavor-wise or playability-wise, but like it definitely looked playable in that match. No, I, I, I plan to. Uh, I, I, nor I normally listen to it every week. I've just been absurdly busy this week. Uh, I actually plan on listening. Uh, during my League of Legends coverage, you get like 20-minute breaks between every round, so I'm going to listen to... Start listening to one of them tonight. Uh, Brian Gottlieb or something? I pronounce things very, very terrible. No. No, it's not BBD. Um, it's the dude that like made the pull for Eternity uh, to Fairy Deck. Or sorry, pull from Tomorrow to Fairy Deck. No, no, I don't cover, I don't cover League of Legends. I'm a League of Legends junkie and I watch every second of Korean coverage. So, like, I'm going to be watching the Korean matches that come on at 3 a.m. on my time. So, an hour and 15 minutes. Now, he seems very intelligent. I think that if he's not qualified, it's either A, or a, a matter of time, or B, he doesn't try to qualify because of real-life stuff. I think he's played a couple of Pro Tours. I just don't think he's on full-time. So, I have a pretty reasonable hand here. My stomach's starting to hurt. Wow, I ate too much pizza and milkshakes earlier. Might actually have to cut this stream short, which sucked. <laughs> so get wrecked. I, I, I schedule my life around League of Legends coverage. It's almost entirely why I'm awake at this time of the night. That's why I stream at like, try to stream about midnight most nights. I legitimately just love it. Oh wow, they don't have another land. That means they probably have essence scatters and syncopate type effects though. I would actually like to listen to more podcasts myself. I guess I'm just going to play this one then.
they don't ever hit another land. This guy just takes seven turns to win. Don't know why I was trying to play that first. I would rather just attack with this in case they use their mana for a silway or a blink or something. Our opponent's pulling one of our favorite things, just like so draw none of the things. Oh wow, Hieroglyphic Illumination. It's a little bit unusual. It's unusual to be loved. No silhouette slash blink, please. It'd be nice if we just get the deal to eight here. Boom, we got the deal to eight. All right, so we have a lot of outs now. I say outs, but like we're really far ahead. They have to hit a land and have a silhouette or the game's over. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know why I love it so much. I've actually not even played February because of an arm injury. Um, or haven't played since February. I say arm injury, but um, it's not an injury. It's I have carpal tunnel. <laughs> I just have carpal tunnel, so I've not played in a while. I'll start playing towards the end of the season, though. I always, I always have to play to get high enough ranks to get all the rewards and stuff that I want. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've struggled. Uh, but but I still just like watching it. I, I I watch it and I watch NCAA basketball and I watch like three or four teams. I, I watch almost any NCAA game that just comes on the TV or whatever. And I watch three or four NBA teams, but no, I'm just, I'm a dedicated junkie to that type of stuff. Anyway, um, cards that are particularly good here are none of our cards. Um, we would want, uh, like, blasting cannons here. But the thing is, cards that are really bad here are shocks, so we always have to take some cards out for shocks. You just don't ever really want to shock in this match. Um, because it is the blue-white build... Um, I'm actually going to bring in these because I think it is reasonable that we get um, settled and can actually kick one of those. Plus, I don't want to just die to Lyra. But that's not trash talking me. I'm a LeBron fan. I'm not a Cavs fan. So I'm just going to be a Lakers fan now. You know, like I'm just going to root for the Lakers. I think we have to mulligan this hand too. It's extremely powerful, but I just don't think we can miss land drops and win. Well, all right. Cool. So it's not trash talking. Like I'm just they're just gonna watch every Lakers game. I already watched every Lakers game because I love LeBron or I loved Alonzo Ball, so I've already and Magic Johnson was my favorite NBA player of all time before LeBron James. So, like, I was already a Lakers fan. Like, the teams I watched last year, I watched Philly, Spurs, Lakers, and Cavs. This year, I'll probably watch Lakers, Philly, um, Spurs if Kawhi is still there, but probably not Spurs if Kawhi is not there. And probably Boston if they recover from their injuries. But so those are probably to be the teams I watch this year. I might actually watch the Wizards this year too because if Dwight Howard tries, Dwight Howard on the Wizards is going to be pretty interesting. I think. I do not play basketball myself. I have a bad back and I've I'm about four hundred pounds. But like from the age of like nine to the age of eighteen, I played basketball probably every day of the week. I didn't really start gaining weight and get out of shape until I went to college and found my first online video game, which was Ultima Online at the time, back in 1998 when I started. But, like, that's when I started gaining weight and stopped leaving my house. If, if, they'd never, if there was never such thing as computers, I would still be in shape. But... But I, I'm one of those people that when they get addicted to something, yeah, I'm, I'm 38, I'll be 39 this year. I'm one of those people that when they get addicted to something, like, it consumes their life. So, like, when I was younger, before there was good video games, like, sports consumed my life playing them. 
now that there's good video games, like if I if I log on, like when I played World of Warcraft in a raiding guild, I played like 16, 17 hours every day. Like it, I honestly just get consumed when it's uh, when it's Magic the Gathering. Like I just when I when I'm really into Magic the Gathering, I'll sit there and play 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. Uh, when I like a Netflix show, like like if I go over here when like at later in the month when the new season of Orange of the New Black come or Orange is the, Orange is the New Black comes out, like I'm gonna watch all of that, basically, basically within a 24 hour period. Now I'll watch the entire series. I'm just I've always been that way. It's one of the reasons that I don't drink or anything because if I drink, I'm pretty sure I would just be a stone lush. Like, there wouldn't be a moment of the day. Like, I would I would have cir- or cirrhosis of the liver already if I was a drinker. It's just my personality. I don't understand why, but I've just always been that way. That's unfortunate. I was hoping he wouldn't have that. Now we're much further away from the fight with fire than we were. <laughs> I don't know, man. I might lose a lot of weight if I got on the, if I got on the meth. <laughs> Might lose a lot of weight. Our opponent doesn't have a counter spell. I've decided it. This hazard is going to deal five damage. Mark my words. Five damage hazard right now. Get got, friend. This hazard deals five damage, by the way. I'm going to laugh so hard. All right. I was a stone liar. I apologize. Not scooping. We're uh, we're four lands away from from sending this fight with fire upside the head. We'll be two lands away if we get settled wreckage, which is what we're kind of hoping for. Boo! I really would. Uh, if you had removal spells, I'd rather you cast settle. Yeah, this is something you might settle. I think I would prefer them not settle, by the way. I would definitely prefer they settle to Fumigate, though, so if Fumigate's the other option, I'm sad that they didn't settle. All right, it's Hazard o'clock. That's not a Hazard. It is three damage to their face, though. Out of your Esper cyborg. Somebody done that the other day to me, and it blew my mind. Like, they were playing fatal pushes and cast outs and all this stuff and I hadn't saw any double white spells I hadn't saw any basic planes and then uh, game two just realized he kept negating his deck by the way <laughs> I don't know why I just now realized that game two he cast settle and game three he cast Lyra and I was like what the hell just happened like these aren't cards that you have here No, why do you not have a settled wreckage, friend? Just settled wreckage. That's all we want. And they left a card on top. That's such a bad sign. Just sitting here chilling with this fight with fire. This resolves. I'm going to fight with fire this. Did not resolve. 
All right, so we're dead now. With only treasures to cast it. I got someone six for one off of it. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, so now we're looking for uh, the chump blocking hazard. Eh, it chump blocks, but it is not the hazard. So it is literally just. I don't know why I said chump block. I meant the blocking hazard. All right, we are dead. I don't think I'm going to change how I sideboarded, though. Still, like, pretty happy with all of these cards. If this was a Bane Fire, that's fair. Well, we don't need a land still, right? I guess we keep this hand, but I don't think these type of hands actually beat these matches. I just don't think I'm willing to mulligan this many good cards. Hopefully we'll hit a Kari Zev or something for turn two. No, we just hit another, like, kind of medium card. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just have to keep this hand. And prepare to, like, get destroyed. I think this is our best match, too. And I think we are their worst match. So, like, it's kind of discouraging to drop one to them. Assuming we do. We've not yet. I'm going to play this one because of Syncopate. Essence Scatter is equally as good versus either of them, so I would rather play this one. It's arguable that I could have just played Goblin Chain Roller because, like, if we could have resolved to Chandra next turn, we could have ticked up and played Dakari Zev, but, like, I don't feel like that stuff was going to happen. Ah, sweet. Well, we never did hit our fourth land, even though we had three lands in our opener, which sucks. We just drew, like, another, like, really bad card in this spot. Hey, Buttons, thank you for the auto host. I assume you're asleep, though. Hmm. They probably have Negate, even though I always sideboard Negate out in these matches because you never want to, uh, you literally never want to Negate a Burn Spell. So that means you're leaving Negates in only for Chandra. Only for Chandra. You never want to negate like a Chain Lightning. So like I think leaving the gates in this match is like super bad. But that's just my opinion, man. That doesn't mean I'm right. I also think disallows are exceptionally bad that you would sideboard them, most of them out depending on what your sideboard is. Don't know what his exact sideboard is, so I can't say that he should take them all out or whatever, but. Well, wonder if we're supposed to attack with the hazard. We probably are, because they could just have, like, cast out anyway. They've already used one seal away, so there's the same number of cast outs and seal aways in their deck. Or probably the same number, I'll rephrase. Yeah, our opponent's got three cards in their sideboard that I don't even like in this match, but we had such a slow draw that it didn't matter. If we had like a one drop, two drop, um... You know, like 1-drop, 2-drop, 3-drop, these spells, don't, you can't even cast any of these spells versus a 1-drop, 2-drop, 3-drop. Which is why this match is so hard. At least we don't mind to lose the fight with fire now. That was such a weird timing. Like, you're not even bluffing anything if you do that. You now, I now know if I draw a hazard, I can resolve a hazard. That doesn't seem to me like something you want to do either. Why would you cast that then? I think that card's fine. I don't think it's good, but I think it's fine. Uh... So we kind of have to make a decision now. Is three cards better in a fight with fire that may or may not ever resolve? Now, 
Yeah, decision made. I think three or four cards is just better. Now the question is, do I go ahead and sack it now to play around a disallow? I think so. Well, as usual, our Beaumonts aren't very good. It's pretty pretty much par for the course for us. Our Beaumonts haven't ever been good. But yeah, this game's probably over at this point. I assume that they're just going to have, like, they didn't play a land, they didn't play a counter spell, they didn't play a card draw spell, even though they played those during their last two main phases. So they're definitely going to have, like, white removal type spells or gear hulks here. Just 100%. I don't think we've 100% lost this game. Like, probably have because of the Ascanta, but like, if they don't have a bunch of counter spells and like they draw medium, a fight with fire still might be good enough. They get even one counter spell though, I assume we're going to lose. They have, they have multiple negates. Multiple negates. Oops, wrong button. I thought I was in the attack phase. So, Wizard's Lightning. Okay. So they have to have a disallow for the trigger vent, I guess. Oh no, they're just going to negate the wizard's lightning and let their bro die. That's that's fine. I don't know how we actually win. They have a negate in their hand, so a fight with fire is not going to be good enough. I'm pretty sure we can just scoop and move on to the next game since we only have an hour anyway. <clears throat> Didn't draw a land, so I guess we'll look at another draw step.
You basically still have to be dead, but, I mean, it's whatever. You didn't main phase use Ascanta this turn. And if they have a settled wreckage or another Gear Hulk will scoop. Yeah, sometimes you just draw horrendously and it doesn't matter. Another blue white deck? Or oh, sorry, an Esper deck. I think Esper deck's one of our bad matches. Um, the additional removal spells and the life gain you get off contempt is just too strong. Alright, well, we're going to have to hit lands. The story of our life. We did not hit lands, the story of our life. Is it bad that I would almost rather just like dump my hand for five fresh cards and start over? I mean, I obviously can't do that, but I really want to. No, yeah, they're missing a land drop. That probably means they have seven million contempts. They don't ever draw lands from them, though. It don't do any good. So now they're going to kill one of these. That's fine. Hopefully they don't have an essence scatter. Or, or syncopate. But, I mean, they have six cards in their hand. They missed a land drop. The odds of them having a spell for the crasher are pretty high. Well, they didn't have it. So that's good, at least. That's not a black source, so that's good for us, too. All right, we're getting pretty fortunate here. Definitely, like, running really hot here. Pays for the, for the running code from last round. Every land they played so far has been... Um... A white source. I wonder if that means they're light splashing black and that we should bring in the factor fictions or not. Or sorry, the uh, thought with fires or not. Alright, anyway, we definitely don't want shocks. We definitely do want Chandra's. So I'd, I'd take out a Lava Mantor and bring in a uh, two Fight With Fires if we knew that they had uh, Lyra. 
But since we don't, I think I'm just going to bring in one Phoenix and resubmit. All right, well, never mind. Another one lander. All right, we keep this one. Uh, I'm actually going to put that on the bottom. I don't actually like any of the burn spells in these matches. We just don't sideboard enough for them. We do have a fast hand, though. Ish. Oh, wow. Cool. Kari Zev's going to resolve, so that's nice. No million removal spells, please. Sweet. No fatal push is nice. Hopefully he just blocks the monkey and prevents two. Nope. Cares not about a monkey. Well, we are officially wide. And I'm not just talking about how much I eat. A second uh, fungal infection would suck, but playing a lot of them's probably bad, so I don't think they're super likely to have one. They're actually just blocking the monkey this time. They forgot Reed can kill flyers. That was so annoying at the pre-release. All right, cool. They're missing another land. Keep missing these lands. It means they're probably loaded up with counter spells, which is why I think uh, sideboarding counter spells in these matches, or sideboarding out counter spells in these matches, are generally kind of nice. Yes, they just don't have a removal spell, which means they probably have a contempt or multiple contempts. So I'm just not going to cast Hazret. Not going to let them counterspell Hazret. I'm going to wait till they have to use a contempt or whatever. Like force them to use it. If they don't play a land, I'll I'll use it during my main phase here, and like make them tap out for a counterspell or whatever. All right, cool. Well, we got super lucky that match, which, like I said, I think makes up for us losing the match that we were super favored in versus. Yeah, having having a planeswalker, like not having to have plummet or crushing vines or whatever, for uh, for Lyra's is like just a really nice side effect of Vivian. Really nice side effect. Hey Jordan, what's up? I remember, I remember it being you. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, 
Crashing Brontodon's really cool too. It's like one of my favorite cards. It's just got that big four, but if Thrashing Brontodon was a 3-3, three, three, I think I'd be so depressed. But, but that was yesterday. That's not today. That was, that was Saturday, man. Are you going back today? I think Nick said he was going to try to come over. Hit join match. Hey, Bishop, he's a really strong player. This is a pretty good hand. Hey, little lava runner. How you doing, Bubby? Oh, he's playing one of the green black decks. I don't know which. Our kingdom to draw one land over the next two turns. Does one land over the next two turns equals Hazaret attacking on curve. And that's one of the funnest things in magic. I'm actually going to give up a point of damage and hold this shock here in case I have a Jade Light Ranger or something. Get bent jade light. It's just like we drew it up. So they have a gear hulk. Let's see whether they put it on top or bottom. And we had the perfect curve in the Hazzy. We've done this twice and once in our last league and then we again today. It feels so good to do that. And like it doesn't even guarantee you win because like if they just have a land contempt, like they're gonna be at four. But like it is such a powerful thing. This match is really hard in general, too. We don't have a whole lot. We basically bring in like the Braids, the Phoenixes, and the uh, Fight with Fires in a match like this. Take out things like Shocks and Beaumonts. Alright, so they didn't attack. That means they pretty much 100% have a... Um, contempt, which is really weird that they would let me untap then, because now they're going to let me get an additional two damage that I normally wouldn't get. I think Bishop is uh, better than that, so that kind of blows my mind. Like he might have won this match if he hadn't got that two points of damage. Not sure why. I guess he just wasn't thinking, or it wasn't likely that I was going to draw the. Uh... Come on, let me. There you go. Wasn't likely that I was going to draw my thing for like a one drop that could attack or whatever, but. So these are the cards that I really like in this match. Basically, anything that can kill a snake. Um, like I was saying, cards that I think are like pretty bad in this match, these don't kill snakes. And these died to Walking Ballista too easy, plus don't uh, attack through ground things. I don't actually like the Lava Runners pretty good, but if I'm taking the Lava Runners out of the deck, I need to take some of the Wizard's Lightnings out of the deck. 
and we don't have eight cards we can bring in. We only have like three cards we can bring in. And Wizards Lightning is still really good versus Snake, and like Snake's the most, obviously they're playing a Snake deck. Like Snake's one of the most important things here. On the draw, it's arguable that we could keep the uh, one thing, but it's just not my thing. The the crasher or the crashers and the kindreds aren't particularly good here, but like our cyborg's just not really set up for a match like this, which is like really bad. Mm, that could be a positive. That's a negative. <laughs> Thought that could be a positive for a second, but like that's not good for us. It almost makes me not want to play this, but like it might force them to play a walking ballista next turn, and then I can force them to sack the ballista, so I guess that's good enough. I don't know. We have double chain whirler though, and they're mana screwed, and we also have all of our big bros. So, there's a good chance that we get to do a lot of stuff here. Like, we really want them to miss here. They did not miss here. They drew, like, basically perfects again. Which is really nice. Oh, wow, they didn't want that? What is in their hand that they didn't want that? Offered them to trade. I was kind of really just hoping to wipe their board out. This comes into play tapped, which is at least nice. And they didn't miss there either, which sucks. Put that in the graveyard. Hmm. I'm just going to keep playing these. Can't double block this Chain Whirler if I play it. I don't mind if they trade one for one of this. They just take nine damage. I'm pretty happy with that too. So either outcome here, I'm happy with. They get to decide which one's better for them, but I'm pretty darn happy with either. That's fair. Another tap land. Them getting these free tap lands has been excellent day for us. That's pretty nice. Draw an untapped land, we just like get to go crazy here. Because the chain whirler like makes their block so bad. Oh wow, that's even better for us. How insane is that? Oh, we didn't draw the untapped land to go super nutty. Still going to play this pre-combat, that way in case they double block, I still I get them both. Again, I don't care if they block this, I don't care if this like trades with this or with this, either one of them is pretty fine. They're at two, and we have a lightning strike and three things that they don't beat in combat. <sighs> So they need to contempt or some, or duress or something like that just not to die to this. And they need a way to like beat all of these in combat, which means they might need like a gear hook or something. I think it seems like we're going to get by another hard match. Running hot when we need to run hot is really nice. Cause we If we get these last two points of damage, we've locked up a pity chest. And locking up pity chests is fun, fun, fun. Yep, that should be game. I guess they could have life goes on or something, but like, they probably don't. Even if they do, it's going to be game four life because we're going to lightning strike pre-combat and they'd have to tap a thing, so they'd go to six and then they could only block two things. So they still die either way. Alright. Locked up a pity chest. And playing for a D surprise. <clears throat> I think life goes on still legal. If that's not a legal magic card anymore, or if that's not what it's called, I apologize. 
But I think there was like some one green thing that you gained four life, and if like a dude died, you gained eight life or something. Or if, uh, if a creature had died, I shouldn't say a dude. I'm getting a really bad habit of that. Because I remember trying it in a Pummeler deck once. I just don't remember what it's called. I'm supposed to just yell. I'm, uh, somebody just messaged me and told me I'm supposed to constantly yell, I am the chain whirler. <laughs> Apparently, Owen says that or something. For some reason, I've missed that. I didn't know that. Is this hand keepable? On the draw with just a Beaumont. I don't think it's keepable. Alright. This hand's clearly not great, but I actually think it's pretty good compared to what we had. Hours of Devastation. Sweet! I was right. It is, in fact, still legal. I remembered what a card did. That might be a first. <laughs> I'm actually pretty ecstatic, by the way, that we mulliganed the Beaumont versus the Mono Red match. Well, the red match. We don't know that he's mono red yet. This hand's pretty good in this match. Our Hazard, unfortunately, will not attack on turn five, but that's okay. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to take this. Actually, I'm just not going to take this. If he's got a chain whirler, we can kill it next turn, so why take two? Um, I guess I'm going to pass. They could have her Killing Phoenix. Well, I don't want to just cast that into Chandra anyway. If they have her Killing Phoenix, we can like Wizards Lightning it, then untap and play Goblin Chain Roller, which is nice. Rip. That's the negative to this. Well, I was just going to cast a Chain Whirler this turn, but now that we can kill that, I'm just going to do this. It's like not great, but it's not bad. We can attack with Hazard if we draw a land. That is not a land, friends. Well, hopefully they, hopefully they can't attack with their Hazard. They can. They can't. Nice. So it's our turn to attack with ours. Nope. We still can't attack with ours. So we lose. Um, I think we can just concede now. We're going to be at nine. They can, we're going to be at seven probably. Yeah, we, we can't win this race. Uh, that's unfortunate. If we'd hit a land, maybe we could have won it. Uh, so, typically you want to cut things that have one into toughness. So, these have one into toughness. These have one in the toughness. I think the shocks are actually kind of bad too, and we could just lose to a braid, so I'm going to bring in these as well. Not bringing in um, Chandra because I think Chandra's defeat's too good. I don't think Chandra's particularly good. Alright, can we win two in a row in the mirror? This hand's pretty reasonable. Normally I like to hold Soskar Mages till later in the game because we can kill their Hazrets, but with this type of hand, there's a chance that we can actually curve in the Hazret, and we can't do that with the Soskar Mage in our hand. So I'd rather just get it on the table.
think I'm going to pass here. Uh, I'd rather use the Chandra's Defeat on a better spell. Gakari Zev or a Kinra or something. All right, I have to kill this at some point, so I guess I'll just go ahead and kill it now. Because if I didn't kill it, then their Chain Roller next turn makes our Chain Roller bad. And I want to just go ahead and slam our Chain Roller here. Could have double burn spell, so I'm just gonna cast a hazard. I don't want to just play the Phoenix into like Lightning Strike, then Chain Whirler or whatever. Might be being a smidge too conservative there, because now like the Phoenix can't attack on the following turn or whatever. But we know our hazard can attack on the following turn regardless of what we draw. So overall, I think it's worth it. <clears throat> so we have the first attacking hazard this game. And he still has four cards in his hand, so it's going to be, uh, sorry, five after he draws, uh, four if he has a land. So it's going to be really hard for him to get three cards out of his hand. If they have like a Soscar Mage plus two Shun, I don't, I, I don't know what they would need. They would need quite the collection of cards. Like how I tap four mana. Still just attacking here. Even if they have like double burn spell or whatever, I think it's fine. All right. So one game to decide whether we get a lot of chests or whether we get a pity chest. Uh, do I want to change anything on the play to the draw? Fight with Fire is okay, but it's not great. Definitely don't want the Shocks. I still don't think I want any of the X ones. Yeah, I think I'm just willing to run it back. I've, I've noticed a lot of these builds aren't playing Ether Spirit Harvester anymore, so like maybe I'm not supposed to sideboard in all the Braids, but like they're still good versus Chain World, Collier Zev, you know, any random creature. The few people who do still have Ether Spirit, Ether Spirit Harvester... And, like, anybody who can set up a play with, like, multiple chain... Or, like, you know, like, kill Phoenix into Chain World or whatever. I think this hand's, like, really bad. I think you need some removal spells, but I also don't think you can mulligan this type of hand. And the fact that they have a Soscar Mage is, like, pretty terrible for us. Like, it's one of the harder cards to beat because it turns all their Chain Whirlers into such better cards. I didn't get anything listed. All I've done is process part of the order. I did I did the writing part. I've not even got the spreadsheet open yet. Alright, so without a removal spell, this game's now probably over. Probably can't come back. I should have attacked. I'm... Pretty much 100% not blocking here. Probably not going to get a chance to block. So I should have attacked pre-combat and at least bluffed a shock to finish off the Karizev. Because, like, he would not have... He very, they very likely would not have blocked. So I probably missed a three-point of damage. Alright, well, I take that back. Apparently, I saved a point of damage. Because now I can block something of mine. So they're going to exert, but I get to block this no matter what and save damage, so. Still going to be a hard game to win. But it could have been worse, right? Because, like, we could just be dead now. Um, I don't think I want to attack. I think I have to hold everything back on defense and just hope that they don't have things. That's a hazard, again, on turn four. That is that is what I refer to as things. <sighs> hmm. 
So how do we con a win this game? There has to be something we can do. <clears throat> Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11 with a discard, so... Maybe I just have to attack with these and hope that it works out for me. Like maybe they'll make a weird block or something. Can't imagine that they would. Maybe I'm supposed to attack with this too, just to see if I can bait them into blocking there. You know, I was probably supposed to see if I could bait them into blocking. Let's see what the lab... They still have two cards in their hand, so I have to play something post-combat, even if it is just discarding. Mm. So we're not dead to this. But we can't win without drawing a lightning strike? Can we even win with a lightning strike? Technically, a lightning strike would be lethal. Trying to decide what preventing three damage does. I don't think preventing three damage does a lot, but whatever. Can't read blue text. Oh, I would, I would, I would slap somebody for some cookies. All right, so what do you got here? Two, three, four, five, ten. If we take it all, lightning strike wins. If we just block, sorry, if we take it all and they have nothing, lightning strike wins. Do we have other outs? Like, what other ways can we win? Let's think about this for a second. If we prevent five and stay at eight, then six for two at the end of his turn, four. So even if we drew a hazard, we would have to leave all of our stuff back, and we couldn't win. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, all right, we just have to take and hope they don't have a lightning strike. I'm pretty sure we only have three outs, and that might not be an out if they have something. We do leave ourselves dead to shock this way as well, but... Eh, it wasn't there, but... It was interesting to think about. Just can't beat hazards that attack first. Oh, wow. Dong, thank you for the dollar. When the hell did you do that? I did not see it. What the hell? Six minutes ago. It did not pop up in chat anywhere. What the hell? It literally is not in chat anywhere. Can you see it? Am I blind? But thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Why is, why is it not in chat? Well, we didn't get our lightning strike. Oh, I didn't know that. I had no idea. You see how seldom I get those. <laughs> I, had, I had stone no idea. Anyway, we got two pity chests. It's not a terrible night. Wish we could have done a little bit better. But we beat some hard matches, we lost to some easy matches too, and then we lost a mirror, can't ever complain about a mirror. But the deck's still been successful for us, we're winning like 65 or 70% of the matches with it. Like it feels like a pretty strong deck, I am a fan. But anyway, I have to run in 18 minutes.
Um, or I have something I have to do in 18 minutes, so we're going to go ahead and run, is what I should have said. But beyond even that, we have... Um, I'll, if I don't go to a paper pre-release today, I plan on coming back tonight and playing another modern deck and probably Esper Control. If I stumble across finding some Nicoboluses, I might try to brew a Grixis deck, but probably won't be able to use any Elm 19 cards lately. Um, Rich, I can't get Elm 19 cards to the 11th, so like I've not read the spoiler, so I wish I could tell you. I'm going to assume no, like none jumped out at me that I didn't see any at the pre-release or I, I didn't see any during spoiler season, but I've not I've not read the entire list. Like Banefire is the only arguable one, and I don't think I like Banefire in these 22 land builds. I think I would prefer them in like the 25, 26 land builds, like the like like Owen's Red Black build. But I doubt I doubt I doubt we play Banefire in Wizard Red. But anyway, thank you guys so much for coming by. I'm really annoyed that I missed that donation. But anyway, let's see who we can find to host. Uh, Z Magic's still on. He's playing Pokemon. I don't want to host Pokemon. Uh, Sparrow's on. Sparrow's on. He's playing New Standard. So, no, oh, never mind. Buttons on is on, and he's playing Grixis. So, we'll give it to Buttons tonight. We, we typically host Sparrow, but... Buttons gave us an auto host earlier. Sparrow's great, so we'll just go ahead and throw it off the buttons. Um, it didn't even impress me too much in Limited. Like, I thought it was an okay card, but I don't think it's going to be good enough for a deck like this. Just don't think you want anything that costs two mana and has such a slow impact. I think you're wanting to win the game a lot faster. And, like, this deck curves out with, like, one drops, two drops, three drops, and hopefully a four drop. So I don't even think you're getting the loot that often with it. But anyway, go watch Nicobola, or go watch, sorry, Buttons cast some Nicoboluses and Scarab Gods. Take care, everybody, and thank you guys so much for coming out for the 365th day that I've streamed in a row. We did it, we made the full year, and we feel great. Thank you all so much. Take care, everyone.